Hello everyone, welcome to Registech. Myself Karthik Punnuswami. You are at the right place to learn in and out of Java concepts. If you guys are very new to our channel, please consider subscribe to it and don't miss to watch till the end of this video. We are going to learn about what is linked hash rate in Cartesian framework and how we can use it and in what are the properties for the linked hash rate and what are the uh, ways that you can create a linked hash rate in Cartesian framework. So let's get started. hash set so from the name it seems like so hash set so basically it is a uh, child uh, class of the hash set so linked hash set right so if you guys see here so there is a two different terminologies we are using here so linked hash set let, let, let me explain this how it actually matters but linked hash set is a child class of hash set and hash set we know that it is a class which implements set interface and set is an interface which uh, actually implements collection interface right so this is the hierarchy of linked hash set in java basically collection interface under the collection interface we have set interface under the set interface we have hash set class under the hash set class we have linked hash set class okay so let's detail like we will go through the properties of linked hash set so the underlying data structure is hash table and double linked list. So if you guys see our, in our previous video where we have explained about like hash set, right? So hash set means like it takes a class which actually uh, underlying data structure is hash table. But if you see the linked hash set, so from the name, the link, right? So which is coming from, it is additionally, it is having a double linked list as an underlying data structure. So linked hash set actually has the underlying data structure of both hash table and double linked list. That is the reason the name is the link is coming from here. Okay, so this is the beauty of it. So link hash set has the underlying data structure as hash table plus double link list. And the duplicates are not allowed. That is true because uh, we don't want to uh, uh, allow any duplicates to get inserted. And the insertion order is maintained. So if you can see in our hash set in our previous video where the insertion order is not maintained, right? But if you guys see here in the linked hash set, so the insertion order is maintained, okay? And then heterogeneous are allowed. That means like any different type of data also you can uh, insert into the linked hash set object. And also null insertion is allowed, meaning like you can able to insert null inside the linked hash set. And also it implements serializable interface and also clonable interface. So basically these are the properties of a linked hash set. Now let's see what are the ways that you can able to create a linked hash set object using the constructors. Typically, Oracle team define like four ways that you can able to define. It is exactly same like hash set. Um, basically, if you see linked hash set is equal to new linked hash set of, basically it creates a, a hash set object, linked hash set object uh, with the initial capacity of 16 and the fill ratio of 0 0.05. So what is that initial capacity and what is the 0 0.75 fill ratio? Let me explain for a quicker uh, understanding. So let's say in array list, um, if you guys see here, so array list has a default size of 10, right? So what does it mean? Basically, you are able to add only 10 objects inside the collection uh, array list, right? And But if you want to add the 11th element, right? So basically, you won't be able to add it here. But instead, what it does is it creates a new array list with more size, right? And uh, this 11th element will get inserted here. This is the 11th element and this is the 10th element, right? So on. But in case of linked hash set, what it actually do is the default size is 16. So basically, it will have 16 as a size and fill ratio is 0.75 but that is a default fill ratio. Fill ratio means that is the parameter which defines up to that mark after the insert like uh, elements get inserted, it is going to create a next new uh, object for storing the additional elements. So you can uh, define uh, your own ratio as well in the further uh, these uh, constructors. But by default, if you create linked hash set is equal to new linked hash set of, by default, it will uh, create a linked hash set object with the initial capacity, default initial capacity of 16 and default fill ratio as 0 0.75. If someone asks you what is fill ratio, you have to be in a position to explain uh, this way. Basically, it is very easy to realize in a practical programming. Um, the next way of creating a, a linked hash set object is linked hash set is equal to new linked hash set of, you can define the initial capacity. If you don't want to go with 16, let's say you want to go with 1000, right? 1000 as a, a default size, uh, like initial size, right? Initial capacity, then you can go for, uh, you can define it, right? And the third one is you can define the initial capacity as well as the fill ratio. Let's say if I don't want to create a new object um, with a percentage of like 75, right? Let's say if I want to go with 90%, like only if 90% of uh, the memory is occupied and within that uh, linked hash set object, then only if you want to create a new object, then you can define 90 here, like 0 0.90, right? And the fourth one is linked hash set is equal to new linked hash set of collection. Meaning like if you want to convert from any other collection uh, 
to link hash it, definitely you can use this. So these are the four ways of uh, constructors you can use it to create a, a link hash it object. Now the question comes, when you have to go for link hash it? So there are two things, like one is based on the requirement, you have to choose the collection framework for sure, right? But what is the speciality with uh, special in case of link hash it? Right. So the link hash head, if you see the duplicates are not allowed, that is okay. But the insertion is maintained. Right. So this is the difference between the hash head and link hash head. Right. The reason is that if you guys see duplicates and insertion order. Right. So the insertion order, if I want to maintain it at the same time, if I don't want to allow uh, the user to add any duplicate records, then in that case, you have to go for link hash head. So whenever the requirement comes like this, then you have to go for link hash head. But if the requirement says, I don't want to maintain the insertion order, but I don't want to allow duplicates, then you can go for hash head. But in case of, if the requirement says like, I don't want to allow duplicates, and at the same time, I want to maintain the insertion order, right? In that case, you have to go for link hash head. There is one more catch. If you can see here, hash table and link, uh, double link list, right? So the underlying data structure is nothing but that is the base uh, for any collection framework, uh, meaning the uh, implemented classes, because this is how the data is getting stored and retrieved and manipulated, everything happens right at the back end. So we should understand how it actually works. The hash table, I have a separate video where we have explained about a uh, hash table. And also for linked list, we have a separate video where we have explained about how the linked list works. So you guys can watch it over. So basically linked hash set actually works in this way, like hash table and the double, double linked list. So um, when I say, uh, like double link list and hash table and this particular order of like, you know, I want to maintain the order, but I don't want to allow duplicates. Let's say you are writing a program or you are like saving like thousands of files inside your computer, right? So let's say your computer has both RAM and uh, hard disk, right? So RAM is our primary memory and hard disk is our secondary memory, which is like a kind of a story, right? But if you want to write, you are writing a program or you are trying to do something in terms of like reading uh, millions of, of files, which you stored already in your database or you are in your um, hard disk and you want to access it uh, very frequently, right? Basically, as I told before, hash set is mainly used when you are doing, uh, mainly used when we, the frequent operation is a uh, search. So definitely, since it is the underlying data structure is also hash table, definitely linked hash set also, you can use it for searching. But what is the speciality of this double linked list and this particular properties? Meaning, if you guys want to access or uh, like a quickly, um, like frequently used or frequently accessed objects, right? So that is where you can go for link link hash it because let's say if I'm accessing thousands of or uh, like uh, I want to retrieve like four records uh, every time, but I have millions of records, right? Out of million records, I want to access only four records 10 times, right? So first time you are going to search with this uh, million record to get the 10 records, but the next time you don't want to go to the same uh, million record to search it by because you can use the catch memory. Probably you guys might know what is a catch memory. Uh, basically in terms of when you're having Java program, when you have a, a Oracle as a database, I'm just giving an example. And like, let's say you are using any framework, like say Hibernate or anything, right? ORM framework, right? Basically, you are not going to access it every time from the database. Instead, you can access the data, most frequently accessed data from the catch memory, which makes better improve in the uh, performance level. So that is where you can use a uh, catch memory. Like that is where you are going for link hash, hash set. So this is one of the basic example, like a real time example I'm telling, uh, but uh, we are going with, uh, all the methods whichever is inside the link has it in our real-time programming uh, in the Eclipse. Here, I have written a program to demonstrate how linked hash it works in Java. As always, we will go with an agenda to see what we are trying to achieve in this program. So, let's go with an agenda. So, first of all, we are going to see what are the different ways of creating a constructors and using that we can create an object of linked hash it class. And also, we are going to see the properties of the linked hash it. Basically, we are going to see if you try to insert a duplicate, whether it is going to allow or not, and also try to see whether it maintains the insertion order or not. And also, if I try to uh, try to insert or add the different data type, let's say heterogeneous objects, uh, we will see whether it is allowing or not. And also to see uh, whether it is allows the null or not. And also, we are going to see how this serializable and also clonable interface was implemented by default by the Java team. And then, Finally, we are going to see when we should go for linked hash it and what is the difference between hash it and linked hash it. So let's get started. As always, I will first run the program to see what is output and I will go with an output so that you guys will understand very clearly. Let me run this program. Okay, here you go. So first, I am trying to create an object of uh, linked hash it by using 
linked asset LHS is equal to new linked asset of so this is the constructor I'm using it so here I'm using uh, no argument constructor so basically this is the uh, uh, generally we use this one to create a um, object for linked asset so I got the object of linked asset here and then I'm trying to uh, add some data over here so basically I'm trying to add so first one I'm trying to add uh, register and also I'm trying to add Java and also 0001 so basically here in these three statements I'm trying to add three objects by with the help of uh, method add right and then I'm trying to print what is the output of the uh, linked asset what it contains so this is the output of this line number 30 basically if you guys see here so first I add register and then I added Java and then triple zero one right so basically you guys can see the same order actually it comes in the same order so it means like it is maintaining the insertion order now let me try to add the same object one more time let's say zero 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 one and try to print it if you guys see here this is the output for the line number 33 which is basically it is not added the duplicate but there are no errors or exceptions it simply ignores it. that is the logic so when someone asks you in the interview whether the linked asset allows the duplicates or not if you say no then you should not say you know there will be an error or exception so basically it just ignores it okay now let me try to add another object which is let's say one two three which is a numeric value which is like integer if you guys see here all these are string because i enclosed everything with double quotes but if you guys see here i'm trying to add one two three which is a number right so which is like an integer so i try to see whether it allows to add the integer or not so this is the line uh, this is the output for the line number 36 basically if you guys see here it actually allows the heterogeneous object because I can see red sister got added, Java got added, triple zero one got added, and one two three also got added. So it means like it is trying to add or allow the heterogeneous objects. Okay. Now I'm trying to add the null object. Basically, uh, null I'm trying to insert in the uh, linked hash. Rate. So basically, it actually allows. Uh, that is the reason you guys can see here, uh, like null is also added. So basically, whatever we guys see here, right? So these are all the same, like similar to. Uh, hash it and finally I will go through with like what is the difference between hash it and linked hash it and when we should go for uh, linked hash it okay so the the way of how it works is all uh, pretty much same because the name it's just a like hash it so all everything is same in addition on top of it like there is a uh, uh, some special feature basically in hash it there is a no insertion order is not maintained but in terms of linked hash it it maintains the insertion order and here I'm trying to see uh, what are the different uh, you know ways of creating an uh, linked asset object using uh, you know uh, different uh, constructors we have. So I'm saying linked asset. If I don't say if I don't specify anything, it by default it will create a constructor or it will create an object with the default size 16. But if I want to define the initial capacity, let's say 20 or 40, whatever I want, then I can define like inside this one. So basically, if I go here. If I mouse over and go here, so this is the linked asset dot class. Basically, this is the class which was created by Java. And if you guys see here, um, this is the default one which I tried to create earlier. Basically, we are not specifying any uh, capacity. By default, it is actually giving like you know uh, having like 16 as a initial capacity and 0.75 as the 0.75 float as a uh, loading loading factor. And in this case, I am trying to have uh, like I want to create a linked asset with the initial capacity of 20 basically they have an option basically if you pass the initial capacity it creates a uh, linked hash rate with that capacity so basically i am trying to create with 16 uh, so instead of 16 i am trying to create with uh, 20 and uh, again like if i want to specify instead of by default 0 0.75 and if i want to specify let's say something else let's say um, 0.85 so i can also define that so basically if i want to uh, go with my different own uh, you know I want to define my own initial capacity as well as my loading factor then definitely I can go and specify this one basically this is coming from uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, constructor basically this is the another way of uh, you know this is another constructor they have basically this is what they have defined like initial capacity and loading factor when I say 20 it comes here and it will create a, a linked hash rate with the initial capacity 20 and if I say like 0.85f which basically it comes here and the loading factor will be like 0.85 what does it mean so only if it like reaches 85 percent of uh, the capacity it creates another linked asset and it copies over that is the logic behind it and there is another way of you know there is another uh, type of uh, constructor we have basically uh, if i pass any other collection to this uh, linked asset basically it will convert into the format of linked asset so basically this is coming from here so if you guys see here 
yeah this one right linked asset of collection so if i say any collection c then that comes here and that will actually creates a, a linked asset format of type okay here i have a collection of tree set so i am passing the tree set object here and it is actually converting that into a linked asset so now so these are the three different types of uh, uh, constructors we can use it and now we can see how the serializable and clonable has been implemented by default if you guys go to the oracle document or the class actually created by java people uh, from the oracle team if you guys see here you guys can see public class linked asset actually extends the asset and implements set as well as clonable and also serializable so this is the logic behind it basically they want to uh, implement the clonable as well as series level and uh, you guys can go through here and if you want to explore more uh, methods basically what you can do is after creating an object so basically if i put a like dot then i can see all the methods coming here let's say if you want to add more ele more elements or if you want to add the elements from another collection to this one i can use add all if you want to clone it i can uh, do a clone if you want to check whether it contains a particular object or element or not then i can uh, use this contains which returns a boolean and also you have n number of methods here we have like equals and you can also see is is the linked asset is empty or not also you can iterate it using iterator also you can remove the object also you can see the size whether what is the size of this particular uh, uh, linked asset and also you can say whatever the methods they are defined here then you can use that so this is all beauty about like linked asset now let's see uh, the interesting topic when we should go for linked asset so based on uh, so in, in any collection uh, framework it's up to us how we are choosing the collection framework it based on uh, the first thing is like based on the first factor is based on the requirement right so let's say the requirement is like you know you should not allow the duplicates but at the same time you should maintain the instance in order and also you should you know allow the uh, heterogeneous objects to be added and in that case you can go for uh, linked asset but if you go for asset basically uh, if the requirement is like you know you should it's not allow the duplicate at the same time it should it, it's instance not is not mandatory to maintain it then you can go for asset so this is the difference between asset and linked asset so typical example is let's say if you are writing a program let's say you are writing a program where you are trying to add the employee objects right and employee objects basically based on employee id and employee id is a unique and you don't want to add any uh, duplicate employees so basically you can say uh, duplicates should not be allowed and also you want to maintain the order of let's say starts from um, uh, employee id then you can go for like you know if you want to maintain that order then in that case you want to display the list of employees how you guys added the same way you want to uh, present it and also it should not allow the duplicates in that case if that is a requirement then you can definitely go for linked asset so this is all about like linked asset um, you guys can explore lot of other methods over here uh, by using the you know um, eclipse where you can write the same program and you guys can uh, uh, write and logic uh, you know to see how this actually works i hope you guys have understood the concept very clearly but still if you guys have any questions or any clarifications required please post your comments in the comment section and i will be more than happy to assist keep watching all our videos there are a lot more videos to come and if you guys like this video please hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel and share with your friends don't forget to hit the bell icon thanks for watching i will see you in the next interesting video guys